In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Major Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. This is the first lecture in a topic entitled Establishing a Quranic Research Team. Now, in this series of lectures, we, I want to um, establish a research team such that the ideas of this, um, of this team come from the Qur'an. So by pondering upon the Qur'an, we want to find the new research ideas and applications such that these research ideas and applications are far superior to what people know today about knowledge and about devices and uh, technology. And the first assignment or the first topic to do research about is, as you can see on the screen, designing a device to harness gravitational energy. So we want to understand gravity and we want to design um, a device that would harness this gravitational energy to be utilized. And this team is to make Allah God Almighty, His Messenger Muhammad and Islam victorious in this day and age because knowledge is power. So let me kind of uh, show a quick introduction to this assignment and this research. So the question or the, what we want to ponder about the importance of energy in humans' life. As you can see on the screen, in this day and age, people are trying to harness many forms of energy like for example solar energy, wind energy, um, nuclear energy, um, oil and so forth. So harnessing this energy um, it's a key for advance, uh, uh, advances in human civilization. So energy is very 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 important. It's of paramount importance and it's, a, it's, a, it's power. Energy is power and it is a key kind of feature in the advances in human civilization and in kind of the advances of people as a whole. So, so it goes without saying that energy is very, very important. And you can see the race around the world to um, kind of um, take hold of energy sources. Okay, so at this point in time, we know these kinds of energy, solar, wind, um, nuclear, and so forth. Now the question, now the research question from the Quran, is there another source of energy that we can harness another source of energy? And the answer is yes. What is this energy? What I'm proposing is to harness gravity, gravitational energy. Now, there are differences between gravitational energy and all other forms of energy. Let me elaborate on this. Now, gravitational energy, first of all, is everywhere. Unlike, for example, uh, oil located in different kind of, uh, loca uh, in specific kind of locations. So gravity is everywhere and you feel it everywhere. Uh, secondly, your experience as a human, you feel gravity more than any other forms of energy and you feel its power. Okay, of course, you feel wind energy, you feel solar energy, but, for example, when you want to uh, jump, you, you, you feel this huge force pulling you down. So it is of great magnitude, this gravitational energy, compared to other forms of energy. So it's everywhere, it's, uh, it's uh, amplitude or it's uh, so high, as it's, it's a very kind of, um, very strong energy. Thirdly, it cannot be stopped by anything we know of. Um, wind energy, solar energy, it can be blocked by objects, but gravitational energy can penetrate everything. So that's another kind of advantage of this energy, that nothing can stop it. So, what I'm proposing is the following. So by depending on the Qur'an alone, we want to understand this energy, and we want to design a device that can harness this energy in its vicinity. So if you have this device in your room, for example, it can harness this gravitational energy within its uh, parameter, uh, perimeter or, or vicinity. So, but just before I proceed, anyone can join this Quranic team, anyone. 
and there are no prerequisites. You don't need to be an engineer or a, um, a chemist or a lawyer or whatever. Even if you didn't do any kind of um, high school, um, kind of high school education or uh, university education, you just you can join this Quranic research team because, as you will see, all the knowledge is deduced by pondering upon the verse of the Quran. There are no prerequisites whatsoever, and it's open to anyone to join this Quranic team. Okay, so the objectives of the proposed Quranic research for this kind of um, lecture: understanding gravity from the Quran, designing a device that would harness gravitational waves in its vicinity. Okay, so now before we can design a device, we need to understand this energy. You need to understand the energy, its structure, its mechanics, such that you can under design this device. That's logical. So. Depending on the Qur'an, we can accomplish the whole project by pondering upon only four verses of the Qur'an. Look um, about at the power of the Qur'an. By pondering upon four verses, we can understand gravity and design a device that would harness gravitational energy. So, there are keys. These four verses that are like keys, what I call them keys, to, to accomplish this. So let's start to the keys to understand gravity from the Qur'an. The first key is to ponder upon verse number 30 of chapter 21 of the Qur'an, which reads, this is translation, Have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one weaved fabric? Then Allah God tore them apart, and Allah God has made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? So, in this Qur'anic verse, if we ponder upon it, Allah says that Allah God has made from water every living thing. How is this part of the Quranic verse the first key to understand gravity? And just uh, something to be noted here, that in physics today, there is no real, let's say, 100 proof solid understanding for gravity. There are a lot of theories about this field and how it's, its mechanics, but a law for gravity, 100%, it's not there. So, um, when Allah says that Allah has made from water every living thing, what does it mean? So many people, they understand this by saying that water is essential for life. If there is no water, there is no life. That is, this explanation is 100% false. Why? Because we know angels, they are a living system. So according to this kind of interpretation, if, um, if there is no water, there is no life, we know that angels, they don't drink water. They don't eat nor drink. So they should be dead, but they are living. So this explanation is not valid. What is the explanation? Now, when Allah says that he has made from water every living thing, this means it's a change in shape while the essence is the same. Let me give you an example. When you say, I made ice from water, meaning liquid water changed into another shape, which is ice, but still water. So likewise, when Allah says that he has made from water every living thing, meaning every living system, everything you see in creation, uh, humans, um, uh, birds, um, everything. It is water in different shapes. It is water in different shapes. Right? So how can this um, benefit us in understanding gravity? And for further explanation of this, you can find all of these kind of lectures on my website. How is everything is water in different shapes? I'll give you the link at the end of the presentation. But for now, how it can this help us in understanding gravity? So, since uh, Allah made from water every living thing, this means that the gravity should follow the law of water as well, meaning that the mechanics of the gravitational field should be exactly the same as of water, how it propagates from its center with concentric circles, that it has a wave shape like a sinusoidal signal, that should be the same for gravity. That's the first key in understanding gravitational energy and its mechanics. The second key, is to ponder upon chapter 15, 1 of the Qur'an, verse 7, which reads, and the heaven containing weaved ropes. So Allah is teaching us that the heaven contains weaved ropes. Heaven means anything that surrounds a central object. We say, for example, the sky it is the heaven of the earth, and the space is a heaven. Heaven is a, a, a volume surrounding a central object. So Allah is saying that this volume contains weaved ropes. How can we benefit from this? Here Allah is teaching us what is the basic unit of creation, the basic 
if you if you can see the most basic units of the gravitational energy, it will look like three weaved strings, as you can see on the screen. This is the 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 um, smallest kind of um, structure of everything in creation, and gravity is no different. So this is the basic structural unit of the gravitational field: three weaved strings, vibrating weaved strings. Right. So, to recap here, by pondering upon these two verses, we should be able to under, to get a, a 100% picture of the gravitational field, how it would look like, and how it, and its mechanics. So, brothers and sisters, this is um, a homework for you and me to ponder upon these two verses and start building a picture of how the if you if you if you would able if you are able to see this gravitational field how it would look like as a structure and how it will, how it propagates how it kind of um, it's mechanics it's um, energy mechanics so my advice to you is to put these verses on your computer and start pondering upon them and asking Allah for guidance now, if you do this, uh, every information that Allah guides you to, write it under the verse. So start putting like a database of information from this verse, from that verse, and so forth. Make a video or send it to me. Go back and forth, communicate with me. Let's start developing this idea more and more into a solid kind of... So the end picture will be... Um, uh, um, the gravitational field, seeing the gravitational field and its mechanics. This is part one. Now part two, the other homework, is how to design a device able to harness gravitational energy. So what are the keys to designing such a device? Again, two verses. So two verses to design a device that would harness this energy. The first verse is verse number 22 of chapter 2 of the Quran, which reads, Who has made the earth a resting place for you, and the sky a structure? and sent down water from the sky, and brought forth therewith fruits as a provision for you, then do not set up rivals unto Allah God while you know. So, if you ponder upon this verse, how is the keto designing a device? Allah says that He has made the earth a resting place for you. So we can conclude from this that the earth is a source of materials needed for cre creatures. It has the raw material for creation. The other um, part of the verse, and a sky, a structure. If we ponder upon this, Allah is telling us that the sky is a structure. So, when you say that there, this is a structure, or you look at a building, you say this is a structure. What we can, can learn from this? A structure, when you build a structure, you need energy. So when Allah says that the sky is a structure, it means that the creatures, they, they are the structure, and the sky should have the energy for, for, this, for these kind of structures to be built. Once more, when Allah says a sky is a structure, a structure needs energy. So you as a human, you are in, within this sky of the earth, within this volume around the earth, you need energy for your growth. And the trees need energy. This energy is within the sky, is found in the sky. And this energy is the gravitational energy. That's the, that's the energy that is supplied to your body and to trees and to creatures for their growth. Right? So that's very, very important. Now, I think you can now sense where I'm going with this. Since you, you harness this gravitational energy for your growth, if we ponder upon our body, as Allah tells us in the Quran to ponder upon the body, Allah should, play, should have placed within the body... Um, certain kind of objects that can harness this gravitational energy. So if we, we understand these objects, we can start um, um, to try to make an engineering device um, with these uh, concepts, like an engineering kind of device to harness gravitational energy. So let's continue. I'll come back to this in a minute. If we ponder upon verse number 17 of chapter 71 of the Quran, which reads, this is the other key to designing such a device. And Allah God has grown you forth from the earth like plants. So Allah is telling us that he has grown us as humans from the earth like plants. And the key, one of the key things to emphasize here, that Allah says that he has grown us forth from the earth. From the earth. 
So, since you are grown from the earth, you need energy. And the source of this energy should be the earth. And the main energy that you feel from the earth is gravity. So, again, gravity is the main energy that's supplied to your body for its, for its growth and structural organization. So, the logic is the following. If, we, if uh, Allah guides us to what objects they can harness this gravitational energy to supply your body with energy for growth, we want to start uh, understanding these uh, concepts into making engineering design. And one kind of key uh, thing that Allah guided me to is that these um, objects, they are the collagen proteins. If you look on the screen, this is a collagen protein. And as you, as you, as you, as you can see, it is made of three um, kind of like um, three strings together. And if we link that to uh, the previous Quranic verse, what Allah says that uh, the heaven contains weave ropes, and we conclude from this that the gravitational energy is composed of three weaved strings, you can see that the collagen protein is exactly the same structure as that of the gravitational energy. In this, in the engineering kind of terminology, it's called resonance, that you have the same frequency for both. So you have the maximum energy transfer. So the collagen proteins, they are like gravity um, harnessing elements in the body. This is one of the key uh, features in the de design of the device. It should have a similar shape to, to cause kind of resonance with, with gravity to harness this energy. So, um, if we study the creation of Allah God Almighty of people and plants, since they harness gravitational energy, we start developing a device able to harness gravitational energy and the energy from this device we can use it in so many things like lighting houses, uh, heating houses, refrigeration, um, material science and um, all kind of uh, energy applications that you know. So as you saw brothers and sisters, the miracle, miracles of the, the miracles of the Quran, the same verse, it has so many um, layers. So if you want a certain thing uh, in your mind, you want to understand a certain concept, and you look at the verse, you understand it. You want another concept, the same verse gives you another meaning. Look, this is something really miraculous, and no one can produce this, except Allah, God Almighty. No human can produce this kind of, um, this level of, of, of a book. So just to recap here, um, I'm calling for the establishment of a Quranic research team. In this Quranic research team, we have different research ideas. And by pondering upon the verse of the Quran, we want to, um, Allah God willing, accomplish these tasks. No prerequisites are required. The first task is to understand gravity and to design a, a device that would harness this. And if we can do this, inshallah, and Allah helps us to do this, then Muslims would have a source of energy which is really amazing. All the advantages, never-ending energy, um, it's everywhere. No one can kind of uh, take hold of the, of the sources of, of gravity. And it has all the advantages. So, let's work together. Let's ponder upon this. Um, ask Allah God Almighty for guidance and help. That's the main thing. That's the most important thing. And let's communicate back and forth with the ideas. At the end, Allah God willing, we have a, um, a real picture of what is gravity, and then we have, would have a device that would, can harness gravitational energy. For example, you can put this device in your room, and it can give you energy by harnessing the gravitational waves within its vicinity. And to know more details about all the topics I talked about, please visit my website at www.quran-mirka.com and you can email me at zquran at gmail.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.